Yeah. So I'll go ahead and do a little intro and we'll get this rolling. All right, sounds great, Spencer. All right, guys, this is DJ Rem from Metalhead Radio, and I have Chris from Ion Vane. How are you, man? Good. Hey, what's up, guys? Good to be here. So, um, so the first thing I always, I always am curious is to know what, what's going on like with you guys right now. What's, you know, what shows you guys have lined up? What kind of stuff like that? Um, right now we don't, we don't have any shows lined up. We're, we're trying to work on some stuff. Uh, we're trying to get on a tour uh, in March of next year. Um, but the main focus right now is just to wrap up uh, the rest of the songs for the next release, which uh, you know we're hoping is going to be early next year. So we're kind of in studio mode right now. Okay, so that'll be in addition to the initial three songs that I got, probably? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That'll be the next release. will be another three-songer. Um, and then, you know, we'll go from there. Okay, well, I look forward to that, and I also look forward to, uh, like, the full album being completed. That'd be cool. Great, definitely. Yeah, we're very excited to, to make that happen, you know. And I think, you know, the more people hear the rest of the tunes it'll kind of just pull everything together and just be a great stamp of where we're at right now you know a great cross-section of what we have going on right so when i play this interview back after i play an interview and you know i only have three songs to play but typically whatever whatever the band sent me i play everything back so they'll, they'll get at least they'll get the, the the initial release of songs oh perfect that's great granted i've been playing them on my show anyways but <laughs> oh nice excellent yeah, I've gotten really good, uh, really good feedback. Did you see the flyer that that um, Scott made? I did. It's awesome. You know, I, I checked in today and I'm like, wow, this this graphic is awesome. We'll uh, we'll start, you know, pimping it out probably tomorrow and and more so Monday to to try and keep you know get people to tune in and listen because you know the site's great. You know, I'm I'm sorry I didn't check, I, I didn't discover it before because you guys really have a cool uh, cool website and uh, streaming radio situation going on. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, Scott Wallace, he's our he's a co-owner in our he's our he does all our graphic design stuff, and he is he's really good at what he does. So it's, absolutely, it's it's a killer graphic. I'm like, wow, I you know, <laughs> we could do some of that stuff, you know, on our site. <laughs> yeah, I just you know, I just I tell weekly I send them what bands I'm talking to, and that's it. I get posters back. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, he's he's fantastic. So while while we're giving people props, I also want to give uh, Clawhammer props for hooking me up with you guys. Cause if it wasn't for their promotions that they send me on a um, well on a daily basis, I would not have heard of, about you. So thank you to awesome. them. Yeah, th- definitely. Thanks to Clawhammer, we we love those guys. They're they're doing a great job for us, and uh, we're happy we found them. And you know we're happy they you know they they have such a cool uh, cross section of people to reach out to. You know I never would have heard of you guys either, so it's it's worked out great. Yeah, because kind of how it works with me and them, they pretty much, they've gotten to know what styles of, of metal that I like and what kind of bands I like to talk to. And they had sent me your your music, and I responded, and I was like, hey, these guys are killer. I really like these guys. And the next email was, you want to talk to them? <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's... So they're doing their thing for you, I guess. That's why I just want to let, let you know that they're definitely doing their thing for you. Thank you, and I we, we definitely appreciate the effort all around and, and really glad you're digging the tunes and your listeners are as well yep very good feedback on it so okay since it's just you can you go ahead and name the the rest of the members of the band and their spots sure yeah we have uh, scott featherstone on vocals uh chuck white on drums and rob such on bass very good how long have you guys all been together um chuck chuck and i have been together since uh 2003 uh, Scott joined at the beginning of uh, 2011, uh, 2010 rather, and uh, Rob joined towards the end of 2010. Very cool. So, yeah, we, you know, we've we've got a history, but you know, you know, life goes on and things change, and you know, people change and all this other stuff. And you know, Chuck and I have been the backbone for quite a while now, and you know, Scott and Rob just split right in, and it's Scott's. You know what you're hearing on those tracks is everything we could have imagined a singer doing to these songs, and it was just great that uh, things worked out to get him in the band. Yep, that's good. Yeah, D- it definitely seems like bands are an evolving process. <laughs> if you know what it I really mean, really does. It's you know, it's one of those things where if you believe in what you're doing, if if you have the perseverance and the drive to get out, you know, you can 
you know, you can eventually achieve some of the goals that you wanted to. I mean, like you said, you never heard of us until now, and you know, it's you just got to keep forging ahead. It's not easy, you know, especially when you're dealing with people's lives and livelihoods and all this other stuff. And you know, when you can get guys in the same room to create music and, and get on the same page, it's it's exciting to to push that forward and, and to keep at it. Yeah, especially since you know the music industry is nothing like it used to be. I mean, you know. If you're so, if you're solely in this in this business to make money, you might as well uh, go home. Absolutely, and you know what? It's been like that. It's always been like that, but now more so than ever, it's it's a double-edged sword. It's so exciting because you, you can finally do you, know, you can finally breach you know breach the doors and knock some walls down and get ahead on your own. But you still need a team of people to help you out, and and even when you when you cross you know to the next level or whatever, it's still it's still a lot of hard work, and it's always been a lot, of, a lot of hard work. But you know, just the way the industry is, you, it's not like you just have this label that's going to pick you up and, and dump a bunch of money into you and, and get a machine behind you and, and push you ahead. It's those those days are gone, and, and they're few and far between. So it's you know, the opportunities are there, but you have to work harder than ever. And you know, and that's okay. You know, we're we're ready to do that. Right, and you know. And if you have the passion and drive to do it, I, I I believe that it'll work out for bands that actually care about what they're doing. Absolutely, and, you know, and that's what it's all about. And like you said, if you're in it for any other reason than the love of the music and the passion and drive to get it out to people, then you know you're in the wrong you're in the wrong business. Right, and that's what's that's what's cool about what I get to do about talking to different bands all over. So today I've talked to a, I talked to a band in Brazil this morning, uh-huh. and then. About an hour ago, I talked to a band over in Sweden, and now I'm wow. talking to you. And every single, every band, it doesn't even matter where you're from. It's like, you know what? I do this because I love music. So Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, there was never any, you know, it's always cool to see the whole rock star thing going on. But, you know, I, I think I could speak for every guy in the band. You know, when we got into music, it was just to, just get our creative ideas down and get them recorded, get them out and reach out to people and, you know, try to make a difference for people. Maybe a song gets you through a day or, you know, a tough time. It's, it's always great to hear a story that one of your songs helped somebody get through a difficult period or, you know, fired them up in the morning or whatever. So that's kind of what it's all about. So uh, speaking of songs, what's, what's the creative process for you guys for writing these tracks and and getting them going. I mean, is, is, there just, is there one person that mainly does the writing, or is it a, a collaborative effort? Just, I guess, it's, what's the process for you guys? You know, a lot, you know, there's a lot of times where, you know, I'll come up with an idea or something like that, but it's at the end, it's always a collaborative effort. And, you know, a lot of times, even, um, you know, some of the tunes on Ivy 1.0 are things that I came in, and I'd start jamming a riff, and, and Chuck would start playing. And, you know, the next thing you know, a half hour later or whatever we have a pretty strong skeleton for a song and it still works out like that many times now where you know we'll just we'll, we'll get set up for practice and plug in and it's like okay i'm gonna see what happens here i'll just start jamming something and if i'm on to something good i know it because you know chuck will jump in rob will jump in whatever and uh you know you just get the songs down and then you flush out the ideas that maybe aren't as strong or maybe don't you know, speak to what we're trying to say. And there's times where I will come in with a song idea or something like that, but I think it's important to get everybody involved in the process because it just it helps to keep things fresh. It helps you from kind of just getting in one mode and doing the same thing over and over. you got to have checks and balances, and when everybody's involved, I think, you know, it brings a lot more creativity into the situation. Right, exactly. How off, so, speaking of, how, how long do you guys practice? How, how, how often do you guys practice? That's, you know, we used to do twice a week um, since we've been trying to wrap things up in the studio. And Scott, our singer Scott's out in New York. So that, you know, kind of poses a, you know, a, a few challenges. Right. Uh, but uh, we try to get, we were trying to get together at least once a week. Um, you know, now it's kind of been with the holidays coming up and stuff, we haven't been doing it as much. You know, just trying to nail down studio time to finish things up. So, you know, once things... Once the holidays pass, the new year comes on, and we have some live shows and stuff lined up. Um, you know, we'll probably try to go once or twice a week again. Nice. Where, what what studio did you guys use, to, or are you using, to record this? Uh, we're 
we're using a studio out of Chicago called Rax Tracks, and uh, Neil Kern's producing. And, uh, you know, he's a freelance guy, so it's not his studio, but it's a place that he uses a lot, it's a place that we like to go to. So you know, most of the tracking has been done at uh, Rax in Chicago. Okay. What, um, so what was your, you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. What, <laughs> what was the driving force that got you to start the band in the beginning? Oh, uh, that's, you know what? When I was 15, I heard Jimi Hendrix, and, you know, it's like, man, that's what I want to do. Originally, I wanted to be a baseball player, and uh, once I started, uh, you know, getting into guitar and losing interest in baseball, you know, guys throwing 90 miles an hour at me wasn't so fun anymore. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, just my uncle played guitar, and hearing Purple Haze and songs like that, and hearing a rock line special on Hendrix, it's like, man, this is what I want to do. And, um, got into Maiden and bands like that, Metallica, back in, way back in the day, and, uh, like, I, I just, it just, a fire burned in me to, to, to play guitar and write songs, and, and, you know, I put a band together, I always knew that I wanted to do something where, you know, we can make a difference and, and, and play good songs and play them for the right reasons, so, you know, just over time, things evolved, and it was always, always about the music and nothing else, you know, we had no you know, other intentions except writing great music or what we perceive to be great music or other people do, and, uh, you know, to get it out there to people. That's cool. That's cool. How did you, you know, this is when I ask all the, the normal crazy, normal questions, you know, that you guys get, you know, how did you know, how did you come up with the name for the band? <laughs> this is probably one of the best stories ever. Um, Good, I love stories. <laughs> way back when I originally started the band, it was called Latent Fury. And, uh, you know, we, the, the band kind of fell apart. And, uh, you know, the singer at the time, Blayton Fury, was the name of one of his instrumentals. And so, obviously, we couldn't use the name anymore. And our drummer at the time literally was sitting in the can trying to think of ways to describe our music and our sound. And somehow he came up with Ion Vein, you know, Vein representing your body and Ion you know, kind of like electrically charging your body. And, you know, we felt like, you know, that's what we were trying to do with our music. We were trying to give you a positive electrical charge. And, uh, you know, it, it was kind of a weird name at first, but it stuck. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a unique name, and people seem to dig it, and I dig it. And it's, you know, here we are. <laughs> that's cool. How about the how about the cover of the album? That's uh, the cover work. That's pretty cool, too, what's going on. Yeah. That's uh, Scott Jackson from Monster Man Graphic out in Chicago, designed, redesigned our logo. You know, it's, it was like a rebirth of the band, this phase of the, the band's career. And it was time for a new logo, and he just came up with this really cool electrically charged logo and came up with that IV thing. And, um, you know, that it, he's actually working on full-blown graphics right now. So, you know, there's still maybe a full-blown cover for this, IV 1.0 release, you know, kind of released after the fact, but, you know, what we'd like to do is maybe do it in stages where you have a full album cover, but you just kind of get bits and pieces, and, uh, you know, at the end, it kind of all ties together, which is, seems like a pretty cool concept. Yeah, I just, I was, I just dig artwork and that, that bands use and, you know, and, and why they use what they use. Just seems like the industry went through a phase where everybody just wanted to put their picture on the cover and didn't really it was no artistic talent to it and now we've kind of swung back I fi i'm finding a lot of bands are actually using artwork and finding artists to help them develop that so it's it's important it's you know i'm sure you've done this too back growing up it's like you know a, a band's artwork or logo or, or whatever they have the persona really really kind of speaks to you and, and you know back when you're flipping through cds or vinyl or whatever you know you run across a cool cover with a cool name and, and it just kind of all pulls it together. It's like, man, I, I'd really like to check this out. And, you know, I, hopefully once our full-blown graphic design is done, it's, you know, it's just going to help kind of with that experience like you're talking about. It just kind of pulls it all together and, and, and makes people want to check it out even more. Well, and you know, how awesome how awesome is it if, a ba if you can, if, if, a, if somebody can buy your record and look at the album, and as soon as they see the, as soon as they see the cover, know who the who the band is without even looking at the title. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, that you know, 
you think of bands like Maiden, one of, Maiden's probably my favorite band, or even Metallica, you know, they always had graphics that, as soon as you saw them, you knew, you know, whether it was Eddie or whatever, you know, just stuff that, you know, said, hey, this is so-and-so, and, you know, we definitely would like to have that, you know, that attraction to Ion Vane as well. When you look at a piece of art, it's like, oh, man, that's Ion Vane, you know, and Hopefully, hopefully we achieve that. Right. Yeah. I was my favorite. My favorite all-time band is Megadeth, and I mean, obviously, their their cover work. They wouldn't ever have to have any words on it. You would know who it is. Absolutely. You know, and that's another great example. You know, it's, uh, Vic, Vic the man, <laughs> Vic the man, the skeleton. Yeah. You know, that's it, cool. <laughs> it's, it's always whether the album was good or not. The artwork was always cool. Right. Exactly. Their new album is really good, though. I really dig their new album. Thirteen. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't gotten it yet, but it's definitely on my list to get. So, like, speaking of other bands, what if I was a if I was to grab your iPod or something from you, what would I find you listening to right now? Uh, right now, I have the new Anthrax. I'm digging. Uh huh. Good uh, choice. Definitely a return to form. I was really impressed. Um, what else do I have? And uh, the new Redemption, this Mortal Coil. I think that's a great album. Um, Symphony X, Iconoclast, um, Mastodon, The Hunter. That's a great album. That that might be my record of the year so far. Uh, what else? Oh, there's something else I've been listening to. Ah, oh, I'm stumped. <laughs> so, oh, the, the latest Dream Theater. Yeah, I've heard a lot of mixed reviews on that one. So, you know, it's, people either love it or they hate it. Right. I, you know what? Uh, kudos to them. I think Mangini was a great addition, and I think they pulled out a great record. You know, considering everything, you know, it's to me, it's probably my favorite since like Scenes from a Memory too, and I think that's probably saying a lot. <laughs> I just love the fact that these these bands that you know that were just becoming something when I was when I was young are yeah. still going. I mean, <laughs> it's amazing their longevity. You know, it really it really is amazing, and you know, it's certainly something we're striving for as well. <laughs> oh man so what um do you have a favorite song to perform live when you guys play oh that's a, that's a good question I enough's always enough is just kind of like that anthem for everything crappy going on in your life right now you've had enough of it whether it's a relationship or your job or whatever it's almost like a rally cry and, and it's it seems like people always rally around that track, and uh, you know that's always a blast to play. You know, and then you have love hate, which is just just pounding energy. You know, it, it, it's just so cool to, to lock into that groove and the verses and 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 just bang away at it. And then you get to the chorus, and it kind of you know it's a, it's a little bit of a break, and then you bam, you're right back into it. So yeah, those two. Is, it, ironically, they're off the first release, but uh, you know those two are always great songs to play live. Very cool. Oh, back to the back to the what are you listening to question. Just just so everybody knows that I, I'm listening to Ion Vane in my car. Yes, and I'm not lying. <laughs> Sweet. Well, I you know I'll burn a CD with all the newer music that I've that's come in come my way. Yeah. And I tend to pick the bands that I know I'm going to be talking to, and then I just I listen to them over and over and over just to really get a good feel for you know for your music. That's cool. So, what's your favorite track? Um, was it Anger Inside? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Definitely. Definitely. And I'm sure once I get, to, you know, once there's more tracks out and I get to hear more out, that'll change. But at the moment that um that one again, again, it's, you know, depending on what kind of day you had, for me if I've had a bad day at work, that's a great song to listen to, to chill out to coming home from work. Awesome. You know, and that's I'm glad to hear that. That's, you know, that's what we hope for. And that, that you know, actually that's another great one to play live too. People love that chorus and, you know, sing along to it, so that's cool. So, what else would you like the world to know about you guys? Well, you know, we love what we do. We love our fans. We love to reach out to new people. And, you know, this is a rebirth of Ion Vane, you know, and, and we're, you know, we're trying to get back out to, you know, after a short hiatus, we're trying to get back out and, and, you know, have our old fans rediscover us and have new fans discover what we do and we love doing it you know we love playing music for people and you know 
the passion is there. You know, we just kind of want to bring it all together with everybody and, uh, you know, just get out to as many people as possible. Very good. Where can people buy the current three tracks they're out? Can they buy it somewhere? Buy them, d- download them somewhere? It's actually free. So you can go to uh, ionvane.com. You can go to our face, you know, facebook.com slash ionvane. Yep. You, and you, it'll get, you, you get pointed to the tracks from, from either site. They're on the Facebook page under our news and events thing, I think. And uh, you can also go to immortal-music.com and, uh, you know, get them there as well. So we figured, hey, we'll try something different. You know, a lot of people have been waiting for New Iron Vein, and we figured let's give it to them free. You know, and continuing with the evolution of the music industry, it's like, well, let's, you know, let's do a digital only release for now, which is what Mortal Music's been trying to, you know, foster, and uh, we think that's a great idea, and let's give it to people for free. Let's, let's get this thing rolling. That's right, all you metalheads. You have no reason to not listen to this. That's what I'm saying, man. Free metal, come on. Yeah. Let's go get it. <laughs> I know, because I get, you know, I'm in, a, I'm in a position where I get a lot of free metal, and I always tell people, they're like, like, why do you like to do that? I'm like, dude, I'm like, dude it's like Christmas every day when I get in my email. Right? <laughs> That's great. Man. Unfortunately, some of the stuff I get for Christmas is, you know, kind of like when you're little. You're like, oh, man, did I really just get that? <laughs> yeah, I know that. You know, that's the other caveat to free. You know, some people, unless they could buy it at iTunes, they don't think it's, you know, quality or relevant, you know, and, and this is a, you know, it's a high quality product. It's on par with everything else out there. I can say that with full confidence. You know, we had great production. You know, Kern did a great job producing and mixing. And, you know, it's on the level with, uh, you know, everything else I mentioned earlier as far as uh, production quality. So no excuses. Go get it, people. Exactly. And I can tell you what, I get a ton of music and a lot of it is not very good. And this is great <laughs> stuff. So... <laughs> And if you're one of them bands out there listening that I don't play your music, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, anything else that you, well, I guess you've kind of, I think we've covered Anything else you want to tell? No, you know, I, I, I think we covered everything. I just really appreciate the, the time and the support. Uh, Metalheadradio.com is awesome. So, you know, keep listening, people. Keep telling your friends. Uh, tell your friends about Eye on Vane, you know. You get a free three-song release, you know, go grab it, go give it to your friends. Let's let's go old school, like back in the tape trading days, and let's get this stuff around. Exactly, exactly. Hey, would it be possible for you to send me some tracks from your older stuff to listen to? Sure, yeah. yeah just... I can, if, if you can shoot me an email or um, whatever, I can, I can certainly do that. Yeah, what's... Okay, I'll, I'll figure out your email. Your email should be on your Facebook page, right? Yeah, you know, you can message me there. Okay, yep. Yeah. That's what I'll do. I'll hit you up there. Okay, one last okay. thing. Can you cu- make a couple of radio tags for me? Absolutely. Okay, so if you can make one that says, you know, this is you're listen- This is Ion Vane, and you're listening to DJ Rem at MetalheadRadio.com, and then a second one that's just for the station that just says, you know, this is Ion Vane, and you're listening to MetalheadRadio.com. Okay. And you can go whenever you're ready. Okay. This is Ion Vane, and you're listening to DJ Rem at Metalhead Radio. Rock. Very good. Cool. All right. Uh, and then the other one was just, this is, you're, you're listening to MetalheadRadio.com? Right. Okay. This is Ion Vane, and you're listening to MetalheadRadio.com. Crank it up. Very good. Thank you. Appreciate that. I'll send, that one I'll send all the DJs so they can uh, play it before the tunes. Cool. The tags are just real, you know. You, you probably already know this, but the tags are just so nice because, you know, if people are just sitting at home listening and not really paying attention, you know, right. they know who they're listening to. Exactly. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, it's it, it's, it, it, it's fun to do, and it's, it's great to, you know, I'm glad uh, you had me do a couple. I was hoping you would. <laughs> yep, definitely, definitely. So, okay, man. Well, I appreciate the, you taking the time and enjoy your time in Wisconsin. Tell, uh, tell everybody in the band I said, what's up, please? We'll do. We'll do, definitely. And uh, thank you. really appreciate it. It's good talking to you. Yeah, you too, man. Okay, have a great one. You too. If we, uh, if we make it up to uh, Michigan, I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely give you a shout. Yeah, let me know if you come close to where I'm at. Definitely. Right on. All right, Spencer. Okay, take care. Bye. You too. Bye-bye. What's that? What was his name? Chris. 
out of Chicago, the band's from Chicago. Hey, you never...